What's up? This is going to be a reading for Gemini Love and Money. Um, let's see. Let's look at the planetary aspects and all that stuff. Um, Gemini Love and Money. And also, it kind of coincides with, um, to be honest, I'm on Gemini third house with the astrological series so i might as well do a gemini third house um reading really quick uh feel free to skip skip ahead if you want to the love and money portion um but gemini is third house i'm looking at my little natal chart in the background uh is mind thinking communication siblings social activity interests neighbors early education or um, if you're nasty, we'll just call it the uh, House of Ideas. Okay. Um, let's see what wants to come up for that. Let's see if there's anything. Ruling planet Mercury, uh, in intellect and communication is in Cancer right now. Cancer again, uh, fourth house astrology. It's emotionality, the mother, fertility, children. Um, emotions, foundations. Okay, let me put this on pause really quick. One second. Actually, no. Um, but point being, uh, sorry, I thought I had a call coming in uh, to do a reading. Um, point being, um, so Gemini's and Cancerian, so you're probably going to be communicating uh, in some fashion. Um, sorry if it's annoying that I'm looking uh, at the laptop in the background, but communicate uh, Mercury and Cancer till the 27th, so maybe about a week left, I think, at the time of this recording. But you know, communicating affairs in regards to the home, in, re in regards to your emotional comforts, foundations, mother, children, could be a, a, an heir to, um, uh, you know. Your, your intellectualizing of uh, the home front uh, or the feminine energy or communicating in regards to those concerns. Um, what else? We're talking Gemini. Let's see if there's any planets in Gemini. Um, I don't see that currently. Um, but let's see what cards want to come out. And um, so for uh, let me see what did we say it was as far as house of ideas okay so let's get it for house of ideas that'll be our little theme spirit of gratitude or love in my highest possible messages at this time guys for one-on-one -on -one reading reach out two dollars a minute um all my info's on the website link below leave a comment like share follow subscribe it really helps the channel um Check out all my social media, Instagram, TikTok, uh, all that good stuff. And uh, appreciate your viewership so much. Thank you. Okay, the House of Ideas. Powered by the Queen of Swords in reverse. So this is being too on the chopping block, too trigger happy, uh, knee jerk, reactionary is what I'm getting. Uh, first and foremost, as far as your ideas may be. Um, could be dealing with a woman. I mean, feminine energy, uh, non-gender specific, technically. Queen of Swords in reverse is Virgo, Libra energy. Keep that in mind. Um, I got the Queen of Swords out here. Like I said, Virgo, Libra energy. So I don't have to look at that aspect of the chart. Um, also, the passing from uh, Virgo to Libra season, which is, and again, I'm just looking at my chart in the background. Um, so pardon the interruption. Queen of Swords is technically September 12th to October 12th is this time window here. So you might be coming out of something, coming out of communications or talks with the person at that time. Again, September 12th to October 12th is what this period represents. Um, coming out of talks with a Virgo or a Libra, 
um, could even be regarding uh, the home front or a woman or some sort of some something of that nature. Um, anything else? Obviously, this is going to be general, so it's not going to specifically apply to everybody. Um, strength card in the upright. Uh, this is powered by number eight. This is abundance. The golden background is a gift from the gods uh, or the universe. Strength card is discipline over this kind of reactionary energy here, uh, Gemini. Um, this could be for Gemini and all signs as well, because again, we all have a, a third house. Um, but let me see. Okay, so... So let me see. So that's basically our theme, uh, not to be reactionary, but have more of a calm, cool, collected response. Um, let's see what wants to come out for the mind and thinking. Anything else? Again, now we're looking at the keywords in the um, kind of wheel here. Seven of Pentacles in the reverse is something not growing in. Could be financially. Okay, that could be on the brain. Um, communication is page of swords in the upright challenging energy again this is what we want to avoid it's very um, you know could be petty the page is a novice um, could even be represent because the page represents uh, winter season the holidays so it could be Thanksgiving Christmas around that energy um, let's see Let's see, let's see. Yeah, that's winter season straight up. Capricorn to Pisces. December. Actually, you know what? It's a little bit past. Um, I was going to say Thanksgiving, but that's more so um, Page of Cups is around Thanksgiving time. But nonetheless, this is uh, Christmas time. Um... I'll say, yeah, Page of Swords, Christmas time. Um, so yeah, maybe even being petty, communicating pettiness uh, during the holidays, um, something to be mindful against. Uh, Four of Cups in the upright, coming out for um, siblings, not being receptive emotionally possibly to your siblings, as far as social activity and interests, uh, giving space, Social distancing, I guess. It's a little wink-wink and a nod-nod uh, at Spirit laughing at us, maybe. Because um, this is a card about giving space to the situation. Uh, justice in the Upright is... Uh, let's see. Neighbors. Neighbors. So close neighbors might be seeing some justice. Someone might be getting served by ju the justice system. Um, as far as early education, again, these are just key phrases that are in this kind of natal chart, speaking to third house Gemini. Um, Eight of Pentacles in the upright is coming for um, early education. So working on early education, somebody might be around. Um... Yeah, I mean, Eight of Pentacles is um, skill, craftsmanship, things of that nature. Um, so, yeah, could be helping someone with early education, maybe a sibling. Um, or you could be in early education, uh, educating someone, uh, teaching, I should say, as a means of income as well. Um, okay, so that's just some of the ideas here. I mean, I know it's very kind of like... a on the button with like queen of swords in reverse strength card like don't snap on someone verbally uh and it's funny because you know gemini is the house of communication F queen of swords is you know energy of communication as well so it's like having the discipline not to uh you know kind of burn someone verbally um but let's move over to love and money gemini um Spirit of gratitude, joy, love, and light, highest possible messages. Let's get love for Gemini. I guess we could call it Leo season into early Virgo is what we could call this. Um, let's see. 
Let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, because we're still in Leo season till uh, August 22nd. But um, let's see what's come up. Love for uh, Gemini during Leo season early Virgo. So we have Venus and Virgo. So there's going to be a tight organizational aspect to love. Venus is actually the planet of love, money, desires, relationships. Um, Taurus has something to say about love and money as well. Uranus is in Taurus till 2025. Uranus is planet of shock and awe. So sudden changes, um, sudden, uh, you know, uprooting. Um, it's essentially divine intervention though. So it's, it's, it's looked at possibly as an obstacle, but it's meant to be a stepping stone for you to evolve, uh, to the next phase in your, in your, uh, life. Um, just looking at the planets here. Um, let's see, Jupiter's going to be moving into Aquarius on the 28th of July this year, 2021, at the time of this recording. Um, so there's going to be a lot more kind of social awareness, probably social functions and gatherings, things of that nature, because that's what Aquarius rules. So that could uh, play um, into you meeting someone. Um, or um, uh, finding a new job opportunity, something along that line. Um, let's see who wants to come out for love. Spread gratitude, your love, and light, highest possible messages at this time. We have Six of Swords in the Upright. Um, moving to a more harmonious time. Uh, this is Aquarius energy. Sixes are about balance. Swords are about communication. It's probably moving to a more peaceful method of communicating. Uh, choppy waters to calm, peaceful waters here uh, is what I'm getting um, with the Six of Swords in the upright. So let's see. Six of Cups in the upright. Okay, you could be moving towards a soulmate here uh, for love. This is Scorpio energy. Two sixes out the gate here. Um, very awesome, peaceful energy, harmonious. This is innocence, friendship. Um, could be family. But again, typically, you know, we speak of romantic love. I mean, you could have obviously love for your family, different forms of love, but typically we speak to romantic love. Uh, five of Cups in the upright, two cups remain standing, moving forward, emotional processing, um, double Scorpio energy. So Scorpio is making its presence known here. Scorpio is the house of... House of Secrets here. So there could be some secrets involved. Let's see what its ruling planet Pluto has to say. Pluto and Mars typically is what run the show on Scorpio. Um, is it Pluto? Or am I tripping? Power and transformation. Yeah, I think Scorpio's ruling planet is uh, Pluto. Power transformation death rebirth that's kind of what we're talking about when we talk about pluto um so pluto's in capricorn here so this could be what you're known for your reputation uh your public image um something in that regard here maybe family secrets coming to a head here uh gemini um but again, having a more calm and peaceful outlook, possibly being able to move on. Uh, Mars is in Leo. Leo's uh, Mars is also a ruling planet of Scorpio, but Mars is action and motivation. In Leo, Leo is actually having to do with romance and love affairs uh, itself. So, um, ruling planet the Sun. So again, this is all connected, people. So the Sun is in Leo. So. Um, obviously could be motivated uh, to take action on love. Six of Swords is traveling. So you could be traveling to um, a loved one if you're long distance, um, things of this nature. Don't rule out, um, you know, the family. 
as well as far as like you know a non-romantic uh, you know, trying to salvage something with family um, chariot this is quick incoming victory forward progress when you do so when you make this effort towards that person here again I know we um, talked about uh, holiday season so that'd be a good opportunity I know that sounds kind of obvious but uh, this is what this speaks to making an effort to be with someone during the holidays um, could say a lot uh, about love as well Nine of Swords in reverse. This is coming out of a worrying energy. Let's see. World card in reverse is unfinished business. Okay, could be in regards to um, responsibilities, overhead costs, Two of Pentacles in the upright. Emperor in reverse, um, not knowing your own power, not knowing your effect and influence could be expressed as a tyrant. Um, that could be coloring your, yeah, the Two of Cups wanted to uh, pop out too. This is about relationships, contracts as well. But again, this is love. So it could be powering your, um, your relationship, obviously. Somebody is uh, not knowing their own strength or playing small or two of pentacles in reverse uh, unable to make overhead costs meet but the good news is they're not worrying about it so um you know that could be a form of empowerment too there with the emperor in reverse um three of wands in the uh at the bottom of the deck opportunity on the table okay any other specific messages in regards to love spirit and then we'll jump over to the money reading any other specific messages, but one clear one is that there's going to be travel involved and it's going to lead to an incoming victory um, coming out of a worry state in regards to unfinished business, possibly uh, pertaining to uh, overhead costs or an imbalance of priorities here, two pentacles in reverse, not knowing your own power uh, or influence or effect. But I think that these things become revealed with the chariot incoming victory here. Um, but you have to kind of make that move first or make that trip because um, it seems to be within the context of Two of Cups. Any other specific messages in regards to love? Obviously, the, 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 the main kind of spiritual message is always going to be be love. You know, even if you have to have love as your mantra, love, 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 that will allow you to kind of face your fears, um, get you out of your mind. Eight of Swords just flashed here. Uh, that's someone who's trapped in their thinking. So, um, and it typically, you know, limits you when your analysis paralysis. But, you know, again, know that you're not your thoughts, things of that nature. Practice one point in mindedness, meaning like what's the next thing. Um, and or, you know, focus on your focus, essentially focus on your mantra, whatever it is. Um... But what were we saying here? Uh, let's get another. Oh, yeah. The, the universal message is, you know, the heart. And um, don't trust that thing that says anything is gained or lost. You know, I just did a reading for someone and it doesn't seem like they're going to uh, send forward the payment that they owe me. But it's like I could revert to kind of the mind conditioned mind that says oh i'm gonna be angry or respond or i'm gonna go after somebody that owes me money but it's like it's all in the heart anyways and i gave him advice and all that stuff from the heart you know but it's karma too so um let's see what we can say for another clear message for love here death card so it could be ending of a phase or a cycle. Um, Ten of Pentacles in reverse is coming out of a legacy or an institution, maybe a family. Okay, that could be occurring maybe this winter time. I don't like to read with doom and gloom. Um, let's see. Yeah, I mean, death is a great recycler, right? Um, but it, it could be someone elderly passing as well. Um, because there's an elderly person mentioned there, uh, or depicted there. Um, 
Typically the matriarch or the patriarch is like the head of the household. So that would kind of represent or be indicated with the Ten of Pentacles in reverse. Um, and then the lover's card here. So it's kind of left behind. So it's almost as if maybe you could be inheriting something here. Um, I'm not getting that the relationship's going to end here with the lovers. It could be upgrading though. Um, you know, being with someone through a time where there's a shift in power or legacy or generation because you're going from the Two of Cups to the Lover's card. So there's that. Um, it's an upgrade here. So very cool if you made it this far in the reading. Uh, if you're looking for love, I mean, obviously you are love. It comes from your heart. Don't get into the funk of thinking that you're out, you, you know, you don't. Don't get into the funk of thinking that you're out of love or don't have love or aren't the source of love because you are the source of love. Um, and also, um, but again, the mind is not the source of love, but what you come from is the source of love. You come from universal source that created heart and that creates our concept of love and all that stuff. But, um, and then obviously counteractively, you know, don't think that you're alone. Because again, these states of want to want love or a significant other or to, you know, f fear that you're alone um, are low vibrational. So don't play into that. Uh, if you're currently single and maybe quote unquote hoping for love. Uh, I think this whole kind of opportunity to travel can... Um, uh, benefit you to during the holiday season uh, if the opportunity arises or if you feel that that's for you um what else can i say what else can i say so yeah very cool um but it also doesn't have to be the holidays i mean the sphinx on the chariot is leo season moving into virgo so this is we're currently in leo season again till august 22nd um so by virgo time could be a fast incoming victory um, what else can I say about, um, let's go to money. Let's see what wants to come up for money. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Ace of Swords in the upright. Um, truth, clarity, victory. Very cool. Empress in the upright. All things love and money. She's powered by Taurus and Libra energy. So something could be coming to fruition uh, early fall, Libra season. Um, some form of communication, a new start. Okay, the Ace of Swords. Mother of the Tarot, pregnant, has to give birth sometime to something great. Um... Like I said, ruling planet Venus has to do with desires, relationships, also money as she rules over the uh, second house, uh, Taurus. This is what you do for money. This is what you do for work, what you do for income. Um, Empress is a good omen. Uh, the golden background is a gift. Okay. King of Cups here, Libra Scorpio energy. Um, emotional maturity. Okay, it's going to be tied up in your finances. Um, spirit messages about love. Excuse me, uh, about money. Spirit messages about money. Full card, taking a leap of faith. Coming out of a marriage or something publicly recognized here. Four of Wands in the reverse. Queen of Cups in the upright. Warmth, emotional leadership here. So we got a divine couple here. Le leaping to the King of Cups possibly is a Queen of Cups here. Queen of Cups is Gemini Cancerian energy. Leaping to Libra Scorpio energy. Um, divine couple, soulmate, faded energy. So something that's on your soul path that you're uh, 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 an equal opposite fit for here. Um, and having to do with influencing your love. Um, let me see... What else wants to come out here? Um, Knight of Cups in the reverse. This is too busy loving yourself. Um, from the heart space. 
to the heart space, um, self-love, prioritizing your happiness, putting yourself in a good mood here. This is watering yourself here with the Knight of Cups. Um, in reverse, that's how I read that. Um, hangman, and this kind of helps free you. Enlightenment here. Um, and that's definitely going to influence uh, your money-making ability is to move gracefully through you know your day-ins and day-outs of however you work or generate income with that sense of enlightenment because no matter what externally you're kind of too busy loving yourself here it's going to bring about enlightenment that's literally going to lighten your load so that you can take a leap of faith and uh, get really truly aligned with um, you know the the cup aspect is emotionality it's you know what you love doing and, and putting your heart in what you do um, so very good very good sorry anything else with love I know people want to hear like you're gonna win the lottery or you're gonna win a car or you're gonna do both or you know but it's not always like that money is just energy it's just it's a mirror, you know, it reveals the level of want and desire that you're at. Remember not to dwell in the energy of want or desire because it's low vibrational. So try to resonate in the heart and the happiness, you know, thankfulness, gratitude. Um, a mantra that I heard Muji say, if you don't know who Muji is, check him out on YouTube. M-O-O-J-I, very cool guy. Um, he says one of the best mantras is to just chant thank you. So you could hum thank you to yourself, um, you know, to the universe and see what that does with your relationship dynamic. Not only, uh, you know, your uh, kind of significant other relationship, but your relationship with life and being itself. OK, that'll throw your your mental game for a loop when you when you start chanting love or excuse me, not love, but you can do that, too. When you start chanting, thank you to to uh eternity quietly to yourself um you know meaning to the fucking empty mind start chanting you know thank you essentially you know what i mean um um yeah i mean yeah it's just it's crazy but it's beautiful that we're capable of, of doing things like that uh five of pentacles in the reverse is coming out of poverty consciousness um and that's very cool <laughs> it's coming out of poverty consciousness the five of pentacles in the reverse very cool uh but you will need to kind of like you know get connected with eternity essentially you know get connected i think our empty mind is like the kind of empirical the physical evidence of you know the closest thing we could do to being connected with source or the infinite or eternity right um pure being essentially without interaction or taking in information but that is needed to come out of this because this is a limited uh, state that the consciousness is reduced into. Just like personhood, desire, worry, anger, that's all a limited state that we're reduced into. So me, like there's no Peter Valadez. He doesn't exist. He's a concept that we made up. It's words, sounds, noises. It helps for practical purposes and government identification. Um, and being able to like call and respond and, you know, do kind of, you know, whatever practical things we could do. But the concept is, is the thing that doesn't exist. It's a, it's an ethereal construct. That's what the Buddhists mean by you don't exist. So when you're too busy being a person caught up in personhood, you probably are experiencing the comings and goings of anger and fear and and but also you know happiness and joy if it happens spontaneously but um i think some of the usefulness of of knowing that essentially you know you don't exist quote unquote or having that kind of outlook is that um at least for the negative aspects you know i think it helps you kind of appreciate things more that come and go um, uh, I'm sorry for the happy aspects, but for negative aspects, you, you could kind of realize that like, you know, it, when I'm busy being caught or stuck on something, it's, it's kind of when the wave 
you know, of, of like an electron collapses into a particle. So you're going from potential to kind of stagnancy. And um, it's something to be mindful of. It's something to be mindful of. You know, only a quote unquote, um, you know, person can, can get upset, essentially. But what we, we really truly are is the awareness, is the space, uh, quote unquote, is the sky that, uh, you know, the weather of anger, you know, occurs, uh, that the weather of anger occurs in, um, you know, where the sky or the space that the weather of the thinking mind or the feeling self occurs in comes and goes, but we're the thing that doesn't come and go. That thing that doesn't come and go is not me. It's not Peter Val. It's not the concept of self because that comes and goes too, right? We're born and we die. Um, but, um, you know, it, it allows us to not be limited to just the concept of self, you know? I think that's very worthwhile because you also realize like, oh fuck, I'm eternity. I'm the universe. I'm everything. Very cool. Uh, helps you not take everything so seriously. That being said, um, buy Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. <laughs> I'm just playing. Um, so that's what I got for you, Gemini. How about you board for one-on-one -on -one reading? Like, share, follow, subscribe. Uh, leave a comment below. Leave a comment below if it resonates, if you like it. Positive feedback. Things that you would like to see more on this channel. Um, what else can I say? Holler for one-on-one -on -one reading. $2 a minute. Email, text, phone, video. Um, chat messenger so you know however you want to conduct the reading whatever you're most comfortable with holler at your boy I'm gonna leave it there hope you got something hope you got something from this reading peace